Praise the Lord, everybody. Pastor Fields here. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It's my joy, once again, to be with you on this Wednesday evening. The Lord has been gracious. He's been kind. He's been merciful to us. And he's allowed us to come together. Another opportunity to go into his word. And I've been enjoying the word of God. We've been in a 10-part series coming out of the Songs of Solomon, Song of Songs. And the Lord surely has been blessing us. Tonight, we're in part number eight. Now, um, just in case you haven't been uh, following us or you've missed a few, you can always go back uh, and catch the replay. And of course, the notes are attached to the lesson. All you have to do is click on it and the notes will come up. Feel free to upload and make copies and so forth uh, for future reference and study. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we do love you and we thank you so much for all that you do and for all that you are to us. We ask that you would bless us now in the midst of your word. Touch our very hearts and mind, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Of course, I want to give a shout out to those here at Greater Refuge Temple of Washington, D.C., and that great church in Baltimore, Jeremiah Temple, and of course, Refuge Temple Annex in Bronx, New York. Thank you uh, for allowing me to be your pastor. And to those of you who join us faithfully, weekly, not just here in the States, but in different parts of the world, we're grateful also to you, and we pray that you've been blessed uh, in these lessons over the years. Now, again, we're in the Song of Songs. We've been in a 10-part series. Tonight, we're in part number eight, and we're in the Song of Songs, chapter two. Song of Songs, chapter two. And verses three and four, we're concentrating on those two verses. And let me read those verses for you. It sounds like this, as the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down under his shadow with great delight and his fruit was sweet to my taste. He brought me to the banqueting house and his banner over me was love beautiful passages of scripture I'm going to read it one more time for those of you who may just be coming in we're in song of songs chapter 2 verses 3 through 4 as the apple tree among the trees of the wood so was my beloved among the sons i sat down under his shadow with great delight and his fruit was sweet to my taste he brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. Title of the lesson on tonight, Sitting Down in His Shade. Sitting down in his shade. Hallelujah. I delight to sit in the shade, and his fruit is sweet to my taste. He has taken me to the banquet hall and his banner over me is love. So, of course, we've learned uh, through these lessons that the Song of Songs set forth in tender symbolism, symbolizes uh, the love of Jesus Christ for his church, his bride, you and I, because we have been born again, spirit-filled believers, have been made part of his bride. And so through this symbolism, it talks about Christ's love for his church and the love of the bride, the love of his church for Christ. So he loves us. We love him. Jesus is the bridegroom. We are his church. So in this small section of scripture that we're dealing with on tonight, the bride is speaking about her bridegroom. And in what she says, we have a glimpse of what I would call the sufficiency of our Lord. <laughs> the bride speaks of her estimate uh, of her loved one and tells us 
what she possesses in him. She describes him in the Song of Songs, chapter 2, verse number 3, verse number 8, verse number 9, verse number 10, and in verse number 16. I'm going to read those for you. Song of Songs 2 and 3, she's describing him to us. As the apple tree among the trees of wood, so is my beloved among the sons. In verse number eight, she's still describing, she's talking about his voice, the voice, the voice of my beloved. Behold, he cometh leaping upon the mountains, skipping upon the hills. Verse number nine, she's still describing him. My beloved spake and said unto me, rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. Verse 16, she's still talking about her lover. The bride is talking about the bridegroom. My beloved is mine, and I am his. He feedeth among the lilies. So she describes him as her lover. She's crazy about him. Oh, yes. And she concludes by saying, my lover is mine, and I am his. So it, it's exactly like this with the Lord and with his people. We love him. Oh, yes, we love the Lord, and you better believe he loves us. We're married to Christ. We are his, and he is ours. Let's read what Paul writes in the book of Romans, chapter 7, verses 3 and 4. So then if while her husband liveth, she married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ. We belong to him now, that ye should be married that ye should be married to another, even to him who was raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. Let me read verse four again, because he's, he's making it clear. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who was raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. So, Look at how rich and how blessed we are. We are married to Christ. We are his bride. He is the bridegroom and he takes good care of us. And because we have this relationship, we can say that we are rich and we are blessed. Romans chapter 8 Mm -hmm. Let's look up Romans chapter 8, verses 16 and 17. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Mm -hmm. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with them, that we may also be glorified together. Let's move forward into Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 3. Blessed be the God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. My Lord, that same chapter, Ephesians 1, verse number 11. Let's see what Paul says, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Paul writes to the Colossian church and just telling us how blessed we are to be connected to such a wonderful bridegroom. Christ takes good care of us. Put that in the comment section, someone, Jesus takes good care of me. Colossians 2 and 9, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Oh, yes, 
And verse number 10, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. No wonder when David thought about this wonderful God we're talking about, he writes in Psalms 87, verse number seven, he writes these beautiful words, as well the singers as the players on instruments shall be there, all my springs are in thee. Hallelujah. My Lord, there's a great theologian by, uh, his last name is Wesley, and he writes it like this, thou Christ art all I want, more than all in thee I find. Hallelujah. What are the rich blessings that belong to us because Jesus has become our bridegroom. He's my lover. Remember that song is an old song, Jesus, lover of my soul. Let's break this scripture down. We're in Song of Songs, chapter two, verses three and four. I'll read it again. As the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down under his shadow with great delight and his fruit was sweet to my taste. Brought me to the banqueting house and his banner over me was love. We're blessed to have him as our savior. He loves us and we love him. And these are the benefits of sitting down in his shade. He overshadows us, he protects us. The first thing we can say that in Christ we have perfect rest. We learn this from the words of this woman who was so in love with her bridegroom. She says these words, the watchmen that go about the city found me to whom I said, saw ye him whom my soul loveth, hallelujah. And she speaks in the scripture that we're using as a foundation scripture tonight. And she says, I delight to sit in his shade. The first part of the verse the Lord is spoken of as a citron tree, a beautiful tree that is rich in fragrance. Even before you taste the fruit, you can smell how rich and how delicious the fruit is going to be. It's rich in fragrance, abundant in foliage, and the tree is fruitful. This is by far the best among trees. You know, the Lord always gives us the best because he is the best. King of kings, Lord of lords. He excels all others. And here the bride is saying, I delight to sit in his shade. And she's indicating the perfect rest she has found in his presence. My Lord, have you ever gotten into his presence and you, and you felt so peaceful? <clears throat> Don't care what's going on around you. I got in his presence and I felt so peaceful. I could just relax in his presence. I delight to sit in his shade, indicating that she has found perfect rest in his presence. I want to read out of the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 11. Verses 28 through 30, come unto me. This is Jesus talking. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, my Lord, for I am meek and lowly in the heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, <laughs> and my burden is light. Listen, after my Savior did what he did at Calvary, Jesus sat down. Oh, yes, because his work was done. That's what the word of God says. After he finished his work on the cross, he sat down. Yes, Hebrews 10 and 12. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. He's talking about Jesus. And because he was finished the work of redemption, hallelujah, we can sit down. My Lord, 
and enter into what the Bible describes as a twofold rest. Peace with God. <laughs> My Lord, I'm going to take you to Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Romans 5 and 1, this is Paul writing, says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace with God. Yes. Philippians 4 and 7, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So here is a question to some. You should be able to answer this if you're born again. Do you, do you know rest from the burden of sin? We have peace with God and we have rest from the burden of sin from having a guilty conscience, from the dominion of sin, and from the demands of the law. Yeah. This can only be found in his shade, in his shadow. Psalm 91 and 1. I'm sure you could, you could quote this. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. If I compare that to what David says in the 27th Psalm, verse number five, for in the time of trouble, he will hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. I'm still in the book of Psalms. Psalm 31, verse number 10, for my life is spent with grief. And my years with sighing, my strength faileth because of mine iniquity and my bones are consumed. My Lord, where would we be if we were not able to hide in his shadow? David writes again in the 32nd Psalm, verse 7, Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Glory. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Selah. Hallelujah. Powerful. So in Jesus, we have perfect rest. Find yourself under his shadow. And if I can get there, I'll have peace from iniquity and my sins. Peace from a guilty conscience. Peace with him. Because he has brought me into his chambers. He has overshadowed me with his love. And he has secured me in his kingdom. He loves me. And I love him. Somebody put that in the comment section. Jesus loves me. And I love him. So in Christ we have a perfect rest. The second thing we glean from that is that in Christ we have complete protection. And we learn this from the words found in Song of Songs. The third verse, chapter 2, verse 3, the watchmen that go about. Let me make sure I'm pulling it up correctly. As the apple tree among the trees of the wood. That's the right verse. So was my beloved among the sons. I sat down under his shadow. So the second thing we glean is that in Christ we have complete protection under his shade, in his shade. That is to say, under the shade of this citron tree, protected from the fierce rays of the sun, the heat of the day. The word shade in scripture denotes protection. If I take you to the book of Judges, chapter 9, verse 15, and the bramble said unto the trees, If in truth ye anoint me king over you, then come and put your trust in my shadow. And if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. The book of Job, chapter 40, verse 22, The shady trees cover him with their shadow. The willows of the brook compass him 
about. And let's compare that to what David writes in the 63rd Psalm, verse number seven, because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. So what is this protection we have in Jesus Christ? It's also twofold. We have spiritual protection for our soul. How long? throughout eternity, and we have physical protection so long as God wills it. Let's take you to the word of God. We said that this protection is twofold, spiritual protection for my soul throughout eternity. St. John chapter 10, verses 28 and 29, this is Jesus talking. And I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand my father which gave them me is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand that's the spiritual part but I, the physical protection is so long as he wills Romans 8 and 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. So if I was to sum all of this up as it relates to in him having complete protection, I'd have to take you to what Paul says in the book of Colossians, the third chapter, verse number three. It says, for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. That's a beautiful verse. You are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. We are hid in him. Hallelujah. He has us in his shadow. My Lord. And because of this, we can say we have perfect rest. And we have complete protection. Third thing we can glean out of the scripture that we read, and I want to read it again. I love this Song of Songs, chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. And we're talking about sitting down in his shade as the apple tree among the trees of the wood. So was my beloved among the sons. I sat down under his shadow with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. Brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. And so far, because of what the bride is bragging concerning the bridegroom, we know that because we're able to sit down in the shade, we have perfect rest, complete protection, and in Christ, we have an abounding joy. Hallelujah. And we learn this from the words that she writes again in that third verse of chapter two. As the apple tree among the trees of the woods, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down under his shadow with great delight. So she says, I have abounding joy. I delight in this. She's telling us how she feels as she sits with her lover and she's filled with joy and delight. I want to take you to the New Testament scripture, 1 Peter 1 and 8. Who having not seen ye love, my Lord, in whom though now ye see him not yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable. And full of glory. Remember, I'm remembering that song. I used to hear it as a little boy during devotion. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Full of glory. Full of glory. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. And the half has never yet been told. Lord, I haven't heard that song since I was a little boy. Whom having not seen ye love, in whom though now ye see him not yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable 
and full of glory. Let's compare that to what David says in the Psalms. Psalm number 16, verse number 11, thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. So as a believer, as someone filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, we enter into uh, and experience the Lord's joy. Yes, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. This is Jesus talking in the Gospel of St. John. This is Jesus talking. Verse 11, chapter 15, John 15, 11. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. So it's a joy that was full even on the eve of his death, a joy that's supernatural. A joy that's experienced even in the midst of trials and tribulation. That's the kind of Jesus joy. He gives us that joy, that our joy might be full. So even in the midst of trials, we have joy. Even in the midst of sickness, we have joy. It's a supernatural thing. Hallelujah. My Lord. Acts 5 and 41. I'm enjoying this. And they departed from the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Acts 16, verse 25. You know, the saints in the early church, they went through trial and tribulation, but they didn't lose their joy. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. No matter what, we've got a joy because of this connection with the bridegroom, a joy that just won't quit. My Lord. Put that in somebody in the comment section. God gave me a joy that just won't quit. Hallelujah. So because of this connection, we have an abounding joy. Do you have it tonight? <laughs> Do you have this joy that I'm talking about? Are you connected? Are you so in love with the bridegroom, the Lord Jesus Christ, until you have this abounding joy going through? But I've got Jesus. Trouble, oh God, on my job, but I have Jesus and I still have this abounding joy. So, because we're under his shadow, because we're connected to him, because I've discovered that he is sweet to my taste. He's taken me into his banquet hall and his banner over me is love. I can declare that I have perfect rest. I have complete protection. I have this abounding joy. And she also declares in this anchor scripture, Song of Songs, chapter two, verses three and four, that we have a bountiful supply. Immediately I hear what Paul writes, but my God shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory. As the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down under his shadow with great delight and his fruit was sweet to my taste. That's the next part. In Christ, we have bountiful supply. His fruit is sweet to my taste. Taste and see that the Lord, hallelujah, is good. So the reference is to the fruit of the tree under which the bride was sitting with her lover. The bride is letting us know that she found complete sufficiency and absolute satisfaction under his gracious provision. He provided for her. She's referencing the fact that I've got fruit under the tree. He's providing me with what I need. I'm so satisfied. What is the sweet, satisfying fruit that we can declare 
what is the sweetness that we experience and that is only ours really because of our union with the Lord Jesus Christ. If we were disconnected with him, we could not experience this joy, this sweetness. But Paul mentions this in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, the fruit of the Spirit. <laughs> is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law, my Lord. So it's true, we can't produce this fruit not without Christ in us. It's the Holy Ghost that, that works in us, that accomplishes this. He accomplishes this through me. His presence within us accomplishes this. My Lord. Let's look up and compare what I just said. In the book of Hosea chapter 14, verse number eight. Ephraim shall say, what have I to do any more with idols? I have heard him and observed him. I am like a green fir tree. From me is thy fruit found the only way I, the only way i can bear this fruit and experience the sweetness that comes from abiding under the shadow of my lord i've got to let him abide in me and produce this sweetness that only comes through how satisfying is his fruit his fruit is sweet to my taste hallelujah thank you jesus so, so far, we're developing the fact that we have perfect rest, complete protection, abounding joy, a bountiful supply. Second, I'm sorry, Song of Songs, the second chapter, verse number four. Listen to what she writes. Song of Songs 2 and 4. He brought me to the banqueting house. And his banner over me was love. This is where we learn that she's telling us about the fact that because I'm under his shadow, I'm, I have personal guidance. Oh, yeah, she tells us about that perfect rest, complete protection, abounding joy, bountiful supply. But when she gets to verse four, she's talking about the fact that because of this, I have personal guidance. He's taken me to the banquet hall. He didn't give me directions. He brought me there. Hallelujah. Notice the he and the me in that verse, he brought me, <laughs> my Lord. Yeah, put it in the comment section. He, and you know who he is, Jesus. He brought me. The bridegroom puts his arm around his bride and leads her lovingly into the banquet hall. I want you to see that picture. Jesus puts his arms around us and brings us, takes us into the banquet hall. My Lord, he brought me. Put that in the comments section. I feel like having church, he brought me. He puts his arm around the bride and leads her to the banquet hall. That's exactly what Jesus is doing for us. Yeah, he wants to do it. Let's look up and compare the book of Psalms 32, verse number eight. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Solomon writes in the book of Proverbs, chapter three, verses five and six. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all of thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. So his guidance is personal. <laughs> Listen, his guidance is personal and his leading is gentle 
and his direction is accurate. It's certain and it's purposeful. Can't get lost if he's got his hands on me, if he's holding me, bringing me to the banquet hall. He knows how to get there and he knows how he wants to bless me. My Lord, I want to say that again. His leading is gentle. His direction is accurate, certain, and purposeful. Everything you've been through has a purpose. Psalm 37, 23 and 24. Psalm 37, verses 23 and 24. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. Hallelujah. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Let's compare that to what David says in Psalm 78, verse 72. So he fed them according to the integrity of his heart and guided them by the skillfulness of his hand. That's my lover. Hallelujah. He takes good care of me. Thank you, Jesus. So just in these two verses, we've talked about the fact that in Christ, we have perfect rest. In Christ, we have complete protection. In Christ, we have an abounding joy. In Christ, we have a bountiful supply. The last one we just talked about was in Christ, we have personal guidance. And we can also glean out of that fourth verse, Song of Songs, chapter two, verse four, that in Christ, we have sweet fellowship. Remember, she says, he has taken me to the banquet hall, literally the banquet hall. The house of delights. This is the picture of his church. And the fellowship we enjoy as members of one another. Hallelujah. Yes, he brings us into the house of delights. And what a sweet fellowship. What a joy divine leaning on his everlasting arms. It's a picture of the church and the fellowship we enjoy as members one of another as we even have fellowship around his table. Remember, 1 Corinthians, we read it all the time before we partake in Holy Communion, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. I've received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me after the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped saying this cup is the new testament in my blood this do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. So here's the fellowship around his table. Fellowship also we have around his word. Take you to the book of Acts, chapter 17, verses 11 and 12. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica and that they receive the word with all readiness of mind and search the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Therefore, many of them believed also of honorable women, which were Greeks and of men, not a few. So we have this sweet fellowship around his table Remembering his sacrifice, he died for all of us. He shed his blood for all of us. He's cleansed all of us, and we're part of the bride. We're in his bride. We are the bride of Christ. And we have a fellowship around his word. And according to Acts chapter 12, verse 5, we have fellowship in prayer. 
Acts 12 and 5, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Here's a church. We're a church. We're a people that pray. We pray about everything, in everything, through everything. Hallelujah. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous, it availeth much, and we fellowship. Hallelujah. Around the table, around his word, and in prayer, we have this sweet fellowship also in service. Second Corinthians 6 and 1. Second Corinthians 6 and 1. We then as workers together with him. So we have fellowship around the table. We have fellowship around his word. And we have fellowship in prayer. It's a sweet fellowship. We're all under his shadow, in his shadow. And Paul says, 2 Corinthians 6 and 1, we then as workers together with him beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. We're workers together. We're together working together in service. Whether it's through joy or in our sorrows, we have this fellowship around his word, around his table, in service, in prayer, in our joys and in our sorrows, we have this sweet fellowship. It's a wonderful thing I'm talking about. I'm getting excited in my spirit. Hallelujah. Through the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we've all been made one. Jesus prayed that prayer. Make them one. We are all one in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Could you imagine? All of us, and I'll just use Greater Refuge Temple here, or Jeremiah Temple, or Refuge Temple Lanix, three different locations, and there are churches all over. We're all filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, but we're all one bride. Galatians 3 and 28, there is neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one I'll read it again. My Lord, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. So we have this sweet fellowship. My Savior. My Lord. Perfect rest. Complete protection. Abounding joy, bountiful supply, personal guidance, sweet fellowship. And here's the last one. In Christ, we have constant victory. Hallelujah. Constant victory. Song of Songs, chapter 2, verse number 4. He brought me to the banqueting house. And his banner over me was love. Here's the last one. In Christ, we have constant victory. His banner over me is love. Somebody put that in the comment section. His banner over me is love. Listen, through faith. In Jesus Christ, and because of his victory, <laughs> because of his victory, Paul teaches Romans 8 and 37, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. How? Through him that loved us. So through this faith in Jesus Christ and because of the victory that he has obtained, we can declare we are more than conquerors. And it's his banner that's over us, not ours. I can't do this thing myself. I can't protect myself. Hallelujah. His banner over me, over us, it's not our banner. It's his banner. It's his victory we share. Glory. It's his victory we share. And his banner over us. Over all of God's children, all of all of his beloved, over the entire bride, his banner over us all is 
love. Listen, if we really do have all this in Jesus Christ, if he's really your lover, you're all in all. Hallelujah. What more could you want? Who can you compare? Who can you compare to this Jesus that we worship? Who could you want more than Christ? My Lord. And remember, this what he's done for us is an eternal thing. He wants us forever. Listen, it's not time to play. If you want Jesus, stay with him. Don't play with this salvation. The Lord is coming soon. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. It's not time to play church or to time him. Time out for saying, Lord, I love you on Sunday and acting like you don't know him on Monday. No, stay connected. Stay under his shadow. Sit down in his shade. Hallelujah. Don't run away. Don't play games. Sit down in his shade. As the apple tree among the trees of the wood. She says, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down. I found out ain't nobody like him. And I sat down under his shadow with great delight. And his fruit was sweet to my taste. And he brought me into his banqueting hall. The banqueting house. The house of delights. And his banner over me is love. And I discovered perfect rest. I discovered complete protection. I discovered abounding joy, bountiful supply. I received personal guidance. I experienced sweet fellowship and constant victory. Thanks be to God who has given us the victory. And because of this, I'm more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. And it's not a result of anything that I could have done for myself. Jesus paid it all. He fixed it. He destroyed the works of the enemy, put his arms around me. There's another song ringing in my spirit. Oh, the joy that came to me when I knew that I was free, when my Savior found me, put his arms all around me. Oh, the joy that came to me. I'm going to stop right there. I'm enjoying this. We have two more sessions to go. I'm enjoying this sit down in his shade. Father, we bless your holy name and we thank you for your wonderful word. You have touched our hearts and minds, given us so much to contemplate and to think and meditate on. Realizing, oh Father, that you've done so much for us. Hallelujah. Help us, oh God, that we will not stray away, but we'll sit in your shade that we'll learn all there is to learn of you and experience all that you have for us to experience, that our love for you will grow stronger and stronger and stronger as the days go by. Bless everyone here under the sound of my voice, everyone that connects to this lesson. Hashandai Elbosi, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. The Lord bless you tonight. I thank God for you. I thank God for you. So, um, if you want to plant a seed in this ministry, you may do so. Our technician will put the information on the screen for you. And those of you at the Annex in the Bronx, you may use Givelify. Jeremiah Temple, hold your seed and we'll plant together on Thursday. Father, we thank you. As we plant seed in the vineyard, I pray that you bless both gift and giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Now, listen, we did part eight on tonight. Um, we're going to take a break before we do the last two in this series out of the Song of Songs. So beginning next Wednesday, our regional apostle will be our guest teacher. Uh, and he's going to teach out the next, I would say, three to four weeks. And he's going to be dealing with the black presence in the Bible. It's one of his specialty lessons. He enjoys teaching that. He's been teaching it for years and he has agreed to share with us here at Greater Refuge Temple in D.C. with Jeremiah Temple and with uh, Refuge Temple Annex and all of you, of course, who join us weekly. And once he has shared with us, we'll come back and do the last two portions of our 10-part series coming out of the Song of Songs. All right. The Lord loves you. And so do I. And I'm anxious to hear what our regional apostle will begin with on next week. And I pray that you will continue to join us. Much word. Many blessings. Yes, many things the Lord wants to do for us and through us with his powerful word. So until next week. I want you to be careful, be prayerful, and yes, be holy. Shalom, shalom.